In this tutorial, I'll show you how to add realistic ink effects to your line art using Rebel and Clip Studio Paint Pro. That's coming up next. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron Rutten, and it is my mission to help artists like you enjoy digital art and learn some new skills along the way. Before we get started, if you're new to my channel, make sure to click that subscribe button and enable notifications with the bell icon. That way you don't miss a single new video. Quick disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Smith Micro, an exclusive distributor of Rebel. So we'll start here inside of Clip Studio Paint Pro. I have this line art drawing of a crow that I created using the darker pencil and the eraser. And I've done all of my ink drawing on a separate layer. So if I hide the background layer called paper, then you can see that this is just black lines on top of transparency. So there's no white in this image. It's just black lines. If you want to see how I illustrated this crow, there's a link to that video in the description of this video. Now, in order to add the realistic ink effects, we're going to need to do that in Rebel. And in order to move a Clip Studio Paint file to Rebel, we'll need to go to File, and we'll need to choose Save As. And here under Save As Type, we will change it from the Clip Studio format to Photoshop Document. We'll go ahead and click on Save. Next, I'll go ahead and launch Rebel, and then I'm going to choose Open. And we'll choose that Photoshop PSD. Now you can see it's brought in that ink layer as a separate layer, and it's on top of our nice paper texture. So let's go ahead and just save this. We'll go to File, and we'll choose Save As. And let's change this from the Photoshop format to the Rebel format, and we'll click on Save. So now we have our Clip Studio Paint artwork in Rebel. Now there's a couple of features that I'll want you to access really quick here. We we'll want to locate the Tilt panel, and in the Tilt panel, we'll want to pay careful attention to our Tilt settings here. Now this blue circle indicates that Tilt is going to be active, and the line indicates the direction of the Tilt. So right now, the Tilt is going straight down. So any water or any paint I put on the canvas is going to run straight down. I could, of course, change the angle of that. And we can turn that on and off by clicking the dot in the middle. So we want it to be on, we want it to be going straight down. The other panel we want to locate is found under Window, Stencils, and that brings up the Stencils panel. Now over here in our Layers panel, we have our ink on a separate layer. I'll want to select that ink layer, and I'll want to go to the Stencils panel, click in the top right, and I'll want to choose Create Stencil from Layer Alpha. Now basically what that's going to do is that's going to create a stencil by looking at the line art and punching the line art out of the stencil. So I'll be able to paint where the line art is showing currently. So now if I hide my ink lines by clicking on this eyeball, you might be able to see that better. Now we can go ahead and create a new layer down here in the bottom of the layers palette. I'll just call this Ink Rebel. And now we can go ahead and select a watercolor brush or an ink brush or really whatever you want and we can paint into this. I'm going to go ahead and go with watercolor and I'm going to choose round. You can choose any color you want. I'm going to use kind of a dark blue like this, kind of a dark blue gray. I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and drag up to make my brush larger. And then I'll go ahead and paint over this entire crow. Now what this is going to do is this is going to keep the paint trapped within this stencil. And what I'm going to get is a more inky, watery color look rather than that flat black that I got when I was drawing in Clip Studio Paint. Now be careful not to go outside of your stencil, because as you can see, I did that up there, and now my paint is going to be outside the stencil. If I want to get rid of that, I can just switch to the eraser, and I can erase that area where I overpainted. Now if we want to hide that stencil, we can click here on the eyeball in the stencils panel, and you can see that paint flowing and trickling down. Now this is kind of an extreme example of how you could wet your ink down. We don't need to do it quite this much unless you want this kind of effect. So let's go ahead and do an undo here. And let's go ahead and just turn off Tilt. We'll go back to that same watercolor brush and we'll just paint over it again. So now we'll go ahead and hide that stencil again. And you can see it gave it a really nice natural ink effect. If we zoom in closely to the beak here, you can see that it's a little bit thinner in some places and a little bit thicker in others. We can go ahead and turn our stencil back on. If you want, you can select some other colors of ink and you can blend in a little bit of that. You can put in some brownish ink here. That way there's a variety of different tones. We'll go ahead and hide that stencil. And now if we zoom into the beak, you might be able to see there's a little bit of brownish tone in there as well. So let's go ahead and show that stencil again. This stencil is saved in our stencils panel, so we can always recall it later if we want to. I'll click on the top right of the stencils panel and I'll just remove all stencils from the canvas. That'll deactivate that stencil. Let's enable tilt again and let's select the water tool. And now what we want to do is we want to paint over our ink with some water to make the ink drip a little bit. So I'm going to make a smaller brush and I'll just paint in this little area here over on the branch. Let's go ahead and hide the visibility of our water as well and we can see it start to run. 
If you want, at any time, you can go ahead and fast dry that layer. You can use this button here, or you can hit F on your keyboard. And so all I need to do is just go through here little by little and add a little bit of water and let it drip. So we let it run a little bit and then hit F. That dries it. And what this is doing is this is making the edge of the ink look nice and runny. If it helps, you can show the visibility of the water. That'll help you get a better idea of where you've placed the water and how much you've placed. The more water you pull out, the more the ink can flow. I'll just jump around to add a few more little bits of water along the edges. I'll go ahead and just paint over this entire branch here because when I do that, that'll end up blending a lot of the ink and making it flow. And that will essentially give me some different tones here in the branch. So I'll just paint over the whole thing like this. You can leave a few gaps here and there if you like, that's okay. I'll hide the water and then just let it flow. Now if some little branches come off of it, that's okay if you like those drips. If you don't want those drips to take off too quickly, you can always drag this line up here to shorten it. Now the dripping will be a little bit more manageable and it won't take off on you. But I kind of like that extreme drip. And you can change this on the fly too if you want to change the direction of the drips. Go ahead and just fast dry it. And continue going along some of the edges here just to wet them down. Go ahead and go in the feathers here just to start to add some dimension to that. Now if you want, you can make this brush bigger as well. You can cover more area, but then the water is really going to start flowing, so you have to watch out for that. Go ahead and fast dry that quickly so it doesn't flow too much there. So if you're doing smaller areas, you probably want your brush to be a bit smaller. If you're doing larger areas, then of course you want it to be a bit larger. Now, I don't mind if there's a few drips that are really, really big that come off of this, because I really want this to look like it's ink. So I'll go ahead and put in a bunch of water here, and I'll just give it time to drip before I fast dry it. That looks good to me. Do a few up here on the chest, anywhere where there's lots of big, thick patches of ink. It's probably a good area to add these. I'll go along the edges to wet those down and break them up a bit. I'll darken the face by lightening those inner feathers a bit as well. Let's go ahead and just turn off the flow now. That way it won't drip down. We can have it kind of just pool up in some areas without there being tilt. Now if you mess anything up, you can do an undo. So I'll go ahead and go back to before I did that. Now if we want to completely dry the layer, we'll go to dry layer. Now the entire layer is dry. And if you want to, you can go to your eraser and anywhere where you want to clean this up, you can. So for example, here on the beak, if I ever did the drip a bit too much, I can erase some of it. On the eye is a good example of an area where I want it to be pretty bright. But be careful because at this point, you'll be erasing all of your ink. You can use that to bring back in some highlights and enhance some of these edges a bit in some places. And if you want, you can continue adding water if there's some areas that you need to wet down. For example, here on the leg, I might wet that down. That adds a little bit of value there. And then when I'm ready, I'll just fast dry it. I make my brush a bit bigger and then just hit this branch again real quick to wet that down. Make my brush a bit smaller. Go right along the bottom edge there. I'm going to hit a few of these areas on the feathers as well. Now let's go ahead and add a new layer. And let's go ahead and select the watercolor tool, and we'll select the brush called Splat. We'll go ahead and sample one of these darkest colors from our crow. Let's put in some Splat here to kind of vignette this a bit, and bring the focus in toward the center. And just build it up darker and darker in the corners here. And give the paint some time to run, and feel free to dry it whenever you like. You could even add some tilt to it if you want it to run down just a little bit. And we'll reduce the opacity of that splats layer a bit. I'm going to go back to the eraser now, because I see a few more areas I'd like to erase. I'm going to do that on the ink layer here. For example, here on the wing. I'll bring back some of those highlights I lost on the legs as well. And then over here on the ear as well, that area should be noticeably a bit lighter. Now if you want, you can also add additional layers if you wanted to add color to this, or if you just wanted to tint some areas darker. What I would recommend is making sure that you keep your ink above everything else. That way you don't accidentally put opaque paint over your ink. So I'll call this layer value, and we can select 
some medium gray colors like this. And we could use a watercolor brush or an ink brush, really whatever you want. That really helps to fill it in more. And then again, you can use your eraser just to erase from that if you want to bring back in some highlights or clean up anywhere where you overpainted. And then of course you can adjust the opacity of that layer to make it lighter or darker. If you want to see how it looks darker, you could also duplicate that layer. You could duplicate it several times to build it up darker on itself. I'll go ahead and just merge this value layer down with the one beneath it. And I'll go back to my eraser. Might bring back a few of the light areas on the feet there. I'll go back to the watercolor now. And let's select a gray that's a little bit lighter. Let's use that to go ahead and fill in the branch here. I'm going to go ahead and dry the value layer. And then I can select the eraser. And anywhere where I overpainted, I can erase. I can also bring back in some highlights here. And I think with that, we have a pretty good looking crow. Now this final step is kind of optional. It's really up to you if you like the effect or not. What I'll do is I'll select the splats and I'll go ahead and add some water to that. I'll also activate tilt and I'll have that run down. And I'll increase the water to make it very wet. Now I'll wait a little while to let the water flow down and then I'll select my blow tool and I'll just pull in the direction that I wanna blow the water and that will add some movement to it and create some irregular looking effects. Again, it's up to you if you like that effect. I think it adds to the creepiness of the crow, so I'll go ahead and keep it. And then when you're done letting it flow, you can go ahead and just dry that layer. Now if I wanna go ahead and save a final copy of this, I'll go to File, Save As. If I'm gonna keep working on it in Rebel, then I'll save it as the Rebel file format. If I wanna bring it back into Clip Studio Paint, then I'll of course wanna save it as a Photoshop PSD. And if you wanna print it or post it to the web, you can choose these other formats here. I'm gonna choose PNG. And with that, we have a finished ink drawing of a crow. If you enjoyed this tutorial, take a quick second to click the like button. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more digital art tutorials like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.